Hopper delayed into July, Florida stepping up the game. Miss Tree to catch Falcon Heavy payload fairing and Falcon Heavy in last preparations. New tentative launch date for Dragon and Bigelow Aerospace to sell flights to the ISS on board SpaceX rockets. Hello, my name is Felix and welcome to episode 9 of What About It. Today I want to extend my gratitude for all the support I'm getting from you. I want to let you know that all these encouraging comments help me to pull through all these hours and hours of work for each episode. Every time I read a comment, I feel the community growing. I reply as much as time permits and as fast as I can. So thank you again for all your support. One more thing before we get started. I'm changing my schedule again one last time from Monday and Friday to Monday and Thursday. This is simply due to the short time between the Friday and the Monday episode. So don't be mad, the number of episodes won't change, just the times of upload. Now, as always, let's dive right into today's exciting news. Hopper delayed into July and likely to fly with SN06. So it's not official yet, but rumors are already starting that Hopper won't fly this month. SN05 still has problems. SpaceX is already working on SN06 though and will hopefully make good progress. When that's finished, it will be the best candidate yet to be used for the first hops in Boca Chica. New dates have not been announced yet, I hope that's gonna happen until the Thursday episode. If so, as always, I'll let you know. The large structure, aka wind barrier, has been growing steadily and Maria, aka Boca Chica Gal, thinks that it might be moved. The starship in Boca Chica is taking shape too. Steadily growing with the addition of a section with insulation or protection on the outside. Speculations range from scratch protection to thermal shielding. But what about it? Could it really be a scratch protection or a heat shield? It's hard to tell at the moment. To be honest, I'm not really sold on the whole insulation or thermal shielding theory. Will this prototype really reach orbit? Does it really look like a thermal shielding? Tell me in the comments. There's not enough information yet. This will surely change though with the upcoming Starship presentation. I'll keep you informed. Florida stepping up the game. A whole different story though is unfolding in Coco, Florida. SpaceX is accelerating work at their second construction site. As you can see in the pictures, Florida is tied now with Boca Chica. Also, their Starship looks a lot shinier and less dented because they're using a different construction method which has already been adapted by Boca Chica. That's the whole reason why the second construction site was created in the first place. To have two teams try out different methods and learn from each other. It seems to work too and Florida has already benefited from Boca Chica's lead. This enabled them to skip lots of the early steps that Boca Chica still had to solve. Next up, Miss Tree to catch Falcon Heavy payload fairings. Miss Tree is on her way with a brand new net to try the impossible again. It will try to catch Falcon Heavy's payload fairing falling from orbit through the sky. The whole SpaceX fleet is on the move on the East Coast in preparation for today's launch. Go Quest and Go Hollywood arrived early just to be joined soon after by Go Navigator and Go Miss Tree. All ships are currently at the landing zone, holding position just waiting for the center core and the fairings to return after the launch. And the final preparations for Falcon Heavy's STP-2 launch are underway. Falcon Heavy is undergoing these last preparations for its launch today. As stated in the last episode, my coverage of this launch will be in Thursday's episode due to the late launch window at 11.30 pm EDT. So as a final teaser, here's the last picture before rollout. As you can see in the picture, Falcon Heavy is hanging under the ceiling awaiting last preparations before the rollout to the launch pad. Thumbs up to SpaceX for the beauty shot. It's gonna be a hell of a ride. In the future, I am planning to do live coverages as well. As always, this time I'm probably going to tune into Everyday Astronauts stream. If you see me there, say hi, I'd love to chat. New tentative launch date for Dragon. NASA announced new tentative launch dates for the ongoing crew program. Chris Gebhardt from nasaspaceflight.com tweeted the latest news about NASA's commercial crew program. And new tentative dates have been set. The uncrewed Starliner demo mission is supposed to launch on September 17th and Crew Dragon is supposed to go up to the ISS with a crew on board for a short one-week trip on November 15th. Soon after that, Starliner is set to do a multi-month trip and stay with ISS for half a year. After Crew Dragon's incident on April 20th, when the already flight-proven capsule exploded in an abort thruster test, the whole program came to a grinding halt. Together with NASA, they are, until today, investigating the cause of the anomaly to be able to fix it. Nothing officially has been announced yet, so sadly there's nothing to be reported. After the incident, the whole schedule had to be rewritten. 
The capsule originally planned for the first crewed flight to the ISS with astronauts Bob Behnken and Doc Hurley will now be used for the high altitude abort test that's still missing. The third capsule though, coming out of Hawthorne, California's assembly line will then be used to get the crew to the ISS. Meanwhile, NASA announced new dates for the program nonetheless. Now please don't get your hopes too high. These tentative dates are only for planning and more related to ISS schedules than progress on the ground. So these might very much change or be delayed. But at least it's an indicator of what direction the program is heading and what we might, with a little luck, see this year. So as always, stay tuned, I'll give you more information as soon as it's available. Bigelow to sell flights to the ISS on board SpaceX rockets for $52 million a seat. If you haven't heard of Bigelow Aerospace yet, let me give you a quick recap of another extraordinary story written by the second space race. Founded in 1999 by Robert Bigelow, a self-made hotel millionaire owning the Budget Suits of America hotel chain, it's a Las Vegas-based aerospace company focused on building space stations. In 2004, they acquired the TransHab technology from NASA, which was the foundation for the inventions released by the company. Coming out of the Johnson Space Center in the 1990s, this technology was an idea to build inflatable space stations. Basically, space balloons with a radiation protection and life support. Bigelow Aerospace didn't leave it at that idea though and developed the technology into reality. The balloon is working and demonstrated its feasibility in May 2016 to NASA and to the rest of the world. Since then, Lauter about the idea has been awkwardly silent as Bigelow Aerospace has been taken more and more seriously. Their concepts go much further than that little balloon as well. Let me introduce you to B330, Bigelow's flagship as of now. With its 330 cubic meters, it is much larger than NASA's 1970s Skylab and only a few cubic meters short of the Soviet Union's Mir station, which had 350 cubic meters. It supports up to six astronauts in orbit for a longer time and is supposed to launch for tests in 2020. But what about it? Why is this so special? Living space in orbit is very limited and even more expensive. Traditional approaches to space station building are very complicated, difficult and expensive. Bigelow Aerospace saw the potential in NASA's TransHab technology and with the money of Robert Bigelow in their back, they were able to maybe develop the future of space station manufacturing. As SpaceX's landing capabilities are a disruptive technology to their competition, Bigelow Aerospace's technology might be a disruptive technology for the space station building business. With launch vehicles getting cheaper and more affordable, we need a place to stay in orbit. A place to enjoy the view and do our work. So the ISS is likely to grow within the next few years. Anybody seen the movie Valerian? On the transportation side is where SpaceX comes into the story. From 2012 on, early in the company's history, Bigelow started working together with SpaceX. Now with NASA opening up the ISS to the private sector, all is starting to come together for Bigelow Aerospace. The modules are being developed rapidly, a cheap and reliable launch partner is available with SpaceX and NASA has given their okay for private astronaut flights. Bigelow, always smart enough to do the early decision, announced on June 7th that they secured four launches with SpaceX bringing up 16 astronauts to the ISS. If you put things together and B330 lives up to its ambitious schedule, more will follow soon with loads more living space available. But what about it? Where's the catch and why didn't I already book a seat? It's the good old problem with the price tag. A seat on Bigelow's flights will come in at $52 million a ticket. A day on board ISS costs another $36,000 for life support and communications. And there is no information yet if that is included in the $52 million price tag. Still, this is yet another sign of the ever-accelerating second space race unfolding a bit more every day. As always, stay tuned for more information. So this again wraps up today's episode of What About It? Harper delays are continuing. Don't forget to put in your best guess, by the way, in the comment section of last week's episode. Falcon Heavy will lift off very soon. Will you watch the launch? Will Dragon make the November launch date? And will Bigelow's balloons be the future for private astronauts? Tell me in the comments. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like, because this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in making more and better content. 
This gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time.